Well, let's be honest. Uh, all uh, DJ Hyde especially, Ooh. he thinks he had something to fucking do with oh. getting me a fucking role in that fucking movie, and Maven does too. And it doesn't make any goddamn sense. I talked to the fucking writer, uh, Robert Siegels, who wrote the script. He saw me at a Ring of Honor show in Long Island. He wrote a character into the script called the Hellbilly Cannibal. He had long hair. He had a big beard. He was barefooted. He had a bag of shit he hit people with. That was the Hellbilly Cannibal. They just had no idea that I was working for companies they were talking to. So then they, oh, that's the fucking guy. Right. You know, like a funny story, like with the whole movie thing come about. Well, you know, first of all, how the, the film people were working, everybody saying uh, Dennis. Uh, it was supposed. To, it was originally Nicholas. Cage. Nicholas Cage. Yeah, he was never supposed to be in it. Well, he I was never. He was, no, he no, 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 no. They said he was going to be Didn't in he it. Did he show up though at a couple shows? He showed up at a lot of shit, but that was just to get investors aboard. They were they couldn't they were worried no one would would produce this movie if Mickey Rourke because Mickey Rourke's name was in the gutter yeah, at this was, point. Right, right. Nicholas Cage he makes shitty movies all the time. This is just another yeah. this is another shitty Nicholas Cage movie. Whatever, here's money. <laughs> that that that's what that Nicholas Cage was never ever ever. That was a big work. That was a big okay. work. He was never supposed to be part of it. Well, how, how did you end up in the movie? Did you have to audition? Well, they the came day? to uh, it's, a, it's a long, Ring funny, Honor, complicated story. In New York, right? right? And. Uh, Carrie never really came in the locker room after the show started. Sometimes if we were there, if we were there all day, he would come, hey, I was going, we would talk right. about baseball, stuff like that. But this time, during the show, he comes in, oh, 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 oh I just want to make sure none of you guys are up here smoking dope. Uh -huh. What? Why? Yes, I would smoke dope, but uh, not in your locker room. And why are you checking on me now? Well, this night. Why this night to check to see if I'm suddenly... Developed an urge to smoke weed in your fucking locker room. Mm -hmm. He goes, uh, uh, Nicholas Cage is here, and he wants to talk to you. Uh, all right, man. Uh, we, you know, and all the all the Ring of Honor guys are all like uh, slathering oil on their skin and whatnot, and uh, practicing these intricate reversals that don't make any sense, and uh, walking through their match in the locker room and stuff. But like, uh, the match was me and Jimmy Jacobs against the Briscoes. Which uh, I've proven I can wake up out of a coma, and this is a talent, a testament to the Briscoes' ability. Uh, I can wake up out of a dead sleep and have a good match with the Briscoes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There was a there was a time you're going. I'm backtracking here. I'm digressing. You got to catch my train of thought here in a minute, so keep track of this. Right, of but uh, I almost died from a staph infection. I think it was uh, 2010. It was so bad, like. Uh, all, 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 all my color was out of my face, my lips turned blue, I had a real bad temperature, and I had to lay down as soon as I got to the arena, and I slept until the match before mine, and I was wrestling Jay Briscoe, and they woke, hey man, you're next, wake up. Oh yeah, oh. Like I ended up, I ended up having to spend like five days in the hospital, but I wouldn't have had a really good match with Jay Briscoe, being damn near dead. <laughs> That's how good they are, you know what I'm saying? They're coming out of a coma. Uh, and, and wrestling him. So on this Ring of Honor night, all these guys are practicing their intricate reversals, and uh, me and Jimmy Jacobs and the Briscoes are eating pizza, like lounging around and big poofy couches eating pizza. And uh, Nicholas Cage comes up and he shakes my hand and they talk about the movie and all this shit. And the producer, like I think, uh, who was all was there that day? Aronofsky was there. Nicholas Cage was there. There was uh, an assistant named Heyman was there. Mark Heyman, I think he was there. And there was uh, another fellow, he was a producer, I can't remember who he was, but he brought his kids along. Christ, I can't remember, it's been so long ago. But these guys come up to me and they say, hey, uh, we're, we're filming for a movie, we got, we got a wrestling movie coming up, we're doing a movie about wrestling, and uh, we would like you to come uh, read for a role. I'm like, whoa, all these good looking dudes who are now half of them are in WWE now, but all these good looking dudes and... Uh, you want to come up to me and talk to me about reading for a role? Like that makes me feel really awesome. But, but then after they left me, they went around and talked to all them good looking dudes and said the same exact fucking shit they fucking told me. So then I didn't feel so good about it. Well, because they, they would, would okay, could drive to, drive to goddamn Brooklyn for a script reading. You know what I'm saying? In, in wrestling sense, 
Uh, I can be in a car for six or seven, eight hours, ten hours, ten hours, maybe twelve hours. It just depends, because right. I know if I just get to the town, they'll right. give me money. Right. So this is like pay your own way to Brooklyn, which is I think it was ten hours one way from Newcastle, PA, which is where I was living at the time. Like drive drive all the way to Brooklyn for maybe some money, maybe a couple of years from now, if everything goes okay and we like it. I'm just not in a position to do that, man. I wasn't going to do it. Especially when they told the this all those muscled up guys the same fucking shit they told me. Now, this was before, of course, I talked to the writer. You know what I'm saying? And the writer's like, no, man, we wrote that with you in mind. <laughs> you know, I, I'd made such a good impression on the writer's mind. He included that character. So then they were overjoyed with actually seeing the guy they wrote. They had no idea I was going to be that Ring of Honor show. No idea whatsoever. So they were, they were happy. Um, but you were, you were not guaranteed the spot. I wasn't going to go. I wasn't going to fucking right. go. And my, your mother told Yeah, you my mom like sold some jewelry and shit and like filled the car up with gas. Oh, fuck, mom. So now, she, she guilt tripped you. Yeah, that. yes, yes. It's like, like, mom, mom. Like, the car's full of gas. Oh, shit. Did you uh, want to go because you didn't think you were going to get the car? Correct. Or? I consider it a big waste of money. Okay. Money is tight. Since I've never really had any sort of, well, since like 2005, I haven't had any, any income whatsoever outside of professional wrestling. But like, in 2005, I worked at a furniture store for maybe three months. But for the most part, all I've been doing is wrestling. But to, to, to drive to Brooklyn for no money, like, I can't afford that shit. I got fucking bill. I got child support, man. I, 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 can't, be, I can't be doing that. But my, so my mom guilt tripped me into driving to fucking Brooklyn. So you go to Brooklyn and you, you did the audition. And well, I was the last motherfucker to make it. Right, you were late. Aaron also gets split. Aaron also had so many people. Like, I saw the signing list. And, like, there were some pretty impressive names. That read for this role, I'm like fuck, what the fuck? Like Aronofsky went home because I was. They didn't think you were coming. Well, I said if I'm gonna, my mom is gonna force me to fucking drive to fucking Brooklyn. I'm gonna have fun with this. So I took my brother, my half brother, who, I, who I, I've since fought. <laughs> and, uh, yes, <laughs> and he's now in prison for robbing a pharmacy with a knife. That's that's the kind of problems he had later on in life. But I was like, you know, I don't hang out with him very much. So uh, why don't you come with me on this trip? And we'll hang out because you know, he was in a bad place in his life. He's worse now. He's in jail. Probably better now. He's in jail because he'll be alive when he comes out of there. Probably so he wouldn't have been if he wasn't been. <coughs> so look, man, we're gonna buy a bag of pot, and e not not every exit, but like every welcome center or rest stop, we're gonna stop and smoke at. This will be like a fucking pot-filled cross-country drive, just me and you hanging out, and this thing will be at the end of it. So who cares when it doesn't work out? Because I know it's not gonna work out. But me and this half brother, who I barely know, and for good reasons, barely know, but we're gonna hang out and try to be a little bit closer. I'm gonna try to use this trip to make me and his relationship a, a little better. So we did. So by the time I got to Brooklyn, uh, I could not process the fact that e odd numbers were on one side of the street and even numbers were on the other side of the street. So I thought, this is a fucking rib. These assholes, who did this to me? John Zandig, Ian Rotten, it was one of those two. I know it. Anything bad in my life, like 10 out of the 10 worst times in my life have something to do with Ian Rotten or John Zandig. Uh, one of these guys has set me up, got me to drive up here, got my hopes up. Oh, wait a minute, these numbers are off. Oh, so I was like an hour and a half late. It's hard to find a fucking payphone in Brooklyn. It's damn near impossible. They don't exist. They don't exist. What are motherfuckers like me supposed to do? Buy a goddamn phone? No. I will not buy a fucking phone. I refuse. I have, I have phones, but they're just to keep naked pictures that people send me. And then I can't, I can't pay my bill, but I keep the phone to keep the naked pictures. You know, have, have a rough day. Oh, hey, yeah, that's right. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> Put the phone. It's in my bag right now. <laughs> but, uh... So, 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 so. you... you you made it. Yes. There Last, guy there. Last guy there. Last guy there. He came back. Aaron Austin came back. Okay. He came back. He, he was in a subway station and came back. He, he had taken a taxi to the subway. He was waiting on the train. They, they told him I was back, 
with their phones. Uh, we got phones. We can right. communicate. Blah, blah. So, so they, they told him to come back, so he came back. You made it, yeah. and, you, and you impressed. Did you find out right there on the spot? That no. You hell no. Out? Hell no. So however long it took, you end up finding finding out you got the uh, the job. I mean, was that like awesome? Were you really excited? Was or was it uh, like, shit? Now I got to do this. Well, no. I just. Uh, I mean, did you realize that? The big opportunity you had, or what that was just something I was doing when I was doing it, man. I was just, nobody thought it was going to become what it became. They offered me some money. It was a good chunk of money. I took it. I never had no. I mean, it was a good chunk of money. I'm not. I don't feel like I was ripped off. I feel I was very well compensated. But that's just something I was doing when I was doing it because I still had to go wrestle somewhere else the next weekend. Um, reading some stuff off of a script for the for the reading that doesn't help my family out a bit. I have to go to Rhode Island next week, or Texas next week, or fucking Mexico City, or fucking wherever. I have to, I have to keep working, so I didn't really have time to get, sit and think about what I did. You, you know, mm -hmm. I, was, I was just trying to stay busy. Um, all right, so you you know you end up the job and you're, and you're, and you're doing it. I think that the, I don't know what the, I think the neatest part was probably uh, being on the Oscars because they showed a clip you're of me the like the Pineapple Express or guys not. are staple gunning each other and stuff. Right. And I'm like, man, that means all those fucking real actors like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie are in their They're tuxedos sitting there watching my stupid ass from West yeah. Virginia. <laughs> oh, bloody God. Uh, they had to watch how, me. <laughs> how was the experience of filming the movie? Was everybody cool? Yeah, everybody? man. Well, the... Was it hard? No, well, it was hard. It was hard because... Uh, I was in the movie. I compare wrestling. I compare wrestling. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, form, it's a form of theater to me. It's an art form to me. Uh, it's theater in the round. Okay, there's uh, people all always surrounding us when we're performing. Uh, they may or may not be looking. They may or may not be drunk. They may or may not give a damn. They may have come there just to shill the fucking show. Who knows what each individual person's motives are for being in that seat that they're in to watch you wrestle. But your job is to entertain that building full of people. Your job is to do your best to make this people, this group of people that are surrounding you while you perform, uh, to entertain them in some fashion. Uh, if they can clap their hands, that'd be awesome. If they can like yell, that's great. Uh, if they get up and take pictures, that's cool too. Or whatever they do, just to make these people and give, give them uh, give them a good time. You know, you have no uh, no second takes, no stunt doubles, no special effects. Well, I guess the WWE does have special effects and stunt doubles, but that's I'm not. You know, you know what I'm saying, man. But so you're you're telling your story to people that are surrounding you and may or may not may or may not be paying attention. Where uh, even with this fucking thing, uh, I am telling my story. I'm being paid to tell my story, like in a movie. In a movie, you're paid to tell your story to a little black box, and nothing matters over here. Nothing matters over here. The only thing is what the little black box sees. And that's why this is intimidating for me now. I keep glancing over at you three. It's as if I'm sharing stories with you. <laughs> that's not intimidating. But telling this, telling my life stories to a, a cold metal black box, I don't know if I, that's what puts me off to the whole thing. But do you understand what I'm saying about the movie, you know? Uh -huh. that's, you're telling your story to this. It doesn't matter what happens over here, what, what's little, what the little black box is looking at. That's all that matters. Did you, you know? feel, uh, throughout the taping, did, did you, could you sense like some jealousy from other wrestlers, no. other workers? Or do you think they Most of them hate my guts anyway. Well, do you think there were people that were genuinely happy for you? Or do you think there were people that like... Uh, I, I, I think my friends were happy. I think the people that weren't my friends were not happy. And that's the same way it was before the movie started. I don't, I don't think the movie changed anything as far but as that concerned. Were, you were in a lot of ways representing, you know, the indies. Well, you know, I mean, anybody, but it was you. They, they, they said that I was the hellbilly cannibal. You know, right. like I, when I went up there read, read, read for the script, like, well, what do you think if we change the character in the movie from the hellbilly cannibal to necrobutcher when you do that? And I said, so wait a minute, in the credits it'll say necrobutcher dot 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 Dylan Suffers? I'm all for that. <laughs> Is there any uh, legal stuff that came along with that in terms of them using the name necrobutcher? Nope. Was it kind of your call, like yes or no? They asked me, would you do it? And I said, of course. 
But they never say anything like, well, we're going to retain a copyright or no. anything. It was just like, no. so it was no. a no-brainer for you then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. I'm, I, I, I'm the best at those. <laughs> <laughs> that and multiple choice. How was Mickey Rourke to work with? Is he cool? He, he, he was really cool, man. Like, uh, I, I saw him lose his temper at, like, this, the makeup people and the hair people. But, like, with me, like, everything was totally cool. Was he uh, like, a diva, uh, as they say? No, I don't think so. He, he was, they, they was doing all kind of, like, makeup on him to make scars right. and, like, tattoos that weren't really there and covering up others' tattoos and, they were, like, body sculpting. And they were always doing stuff to him. So, like, he, he had to put up with a lot more shit than I did, you know, sure. so...